Hi, welcome. We are the California Condors. Hi, I'm Joseph Bogachitz. I am a marketing major here at Cal Poly. Uh, I've worked for three years in the restaurant industry, so I have three years of culinary experience, and I am doing some minor retail stuff, so that's my qualifications for this. Hi, I'm Sarah Whitney Patterson. I've worked in food retail and with small little children. So the patience level is high for about three and a half years. So it's a mix of everything to bring to the California Condors. Hi, I'm Amy Wardoff. My major is finance, real estate, and law. I have a year of working in a cupcakery customer service and two years of retail management service. And I've uh, mainly worked around the cashier, so I'm more of a finance to add to this team. My name is Nicholas Adi, I'm a graphic design major currently, and I have roughly one year of sales experience as a cashier and uh, bike assembly. Uh, my name is Benny Hong, I'm a CIS, CIS major, and I have no relevant work experience um, that relates to this kind of work, but I try to do my best. Hello, my name is Sean Clem, and, um, I'm, I'm, and I'm an accounting major, and I think I'm a pretty slow guy. So next up is our executive summary. We are a nonprofit organization formed on September 30th, 2016. Our nonprofit was Alzheimer's Research Association, and that would be everything that we make after a break-even point. Then next we sold the Pillsbury Holiday Cookies. They had like cute little bats on them and like Halloween pumpkins. They were very adorable and delicious. Lastly, we had two keys to our success story. That would be good market research and our good price point. Um, now I'll talk about the target customers. Our main target customers was the student population of Cal Poly Pomona. And according to the IRAR from the CPP website, um, there are roughly 22,000 students um, enrolled as of the fall quarter of 2015. And of that population, 57% um, of, um, of them are male, the other story 43% were females, and there were, there, were, um, there were 2,400 students living on campus, which includes the suites and the resident halls. And not only that, but um, our we had our um, sales during the career fair, so there were lot, so there were lots of potential customers, including the the volunteers, the career fair attendees, and the students flocking towards it. And this is a chart of the market demographic. As you can see, um, there's, um, there's a bunch of ethnic groups, and you can see how diverse our our campus is. And you see like the, the international students and. Uh, now our uh, goals and objectives. Our, goal, our main goal was to sell as much co cookies as possible to as many students. Um, and now, not only to maximize our profit, but to um, pro provide a delicious and quick snack for people um, and to lift their spirits up for the next upcoming Halloween. And our objective was to um, sell at least 30 bags of cookies to at least break even in profit. For the first step of our SWOT analysis will be the strengths. Our first strength listed is having a core group. Our team was motivated to succeed and we worked hard to accomplish our goals. All of us were super eager to work on this project, so it helped make things a happy and easier environment. We were in constant communication via Google Docs as well as our group text, and we were all able to be present for the sale, which made our team a lot better as well. We started out with a price point as a dollar for our decorative package of cookies because of our low budget for us being college students. Um, having a low investment is also another one of our strengths. Our initial investment made it so that we weren't dependent on success or eager to make a profit, um, but we were excited to actually see the um, overcome of what we were selling. And it also made it easier to reach out to our philanthropic student body as we were nonprofit and having the whatever profits came towards going to the Alzheimer's Research Association. On to our weaknesses. Our primary weakness was sales. We didn't have enough sales experience and personnel and equipment to properly advertise at our actual location in order to draw in customers so we could actually engage in the marketing process with them. Second would be the time investment. As college students with 
many of whom had jobs. We didn't have enough time to really devote to doing a full-time marketing or to advertising or to actually the physical sale, which leads then to, it was a limited time offer. We were only there for one hour on one day and that really hampered our possible sales because people didn't really have enough of a, an experience with us and didn't feel like they knew us. Which then leads to the lack of exposure because people didn't really know who we were or anything about us. They didn't have any real reason to trust us when we said that we were selling things and that any profits were going to actual nonprofit organizations for charity. And our advertising was limited mostly to social media and just getting the word out physically. Which would have been okay possibly if we didn't have competitors that really hampered our sales because they were selling pandal shape and candy apples which just completely clashes with our cookies at our location and they were just right next to us. But the next step of the SWOT analysis is opportunities. Our first opportunity was we could have been um, joined up with another group in our class as a joint business venture. We probably would have looked more attractive to our customers if we had a complimentary item such as milk or coffee selling next to us. It would have helped both groups in the end. And another opportunity would have an alternative payment as an option to our students because if we were to accept a credit card or, uh, or points as meal plans for those who live on campus or even Venmo as an app to offer, we would have increased our sales because not as college students, not all of us carry around cash even if it is a dollar or two. Our threats would be then a lower cost of competitive goods, say ice cream, if that was cheaper then it would definitely make our price point seem unreasonable to some degree. Also if the rise in production ever happened, say for the cookie dough if it increased in price, then it would cut into our profits and we wouldn't be able to give as much to charity after the point. And also market perception was a huge threat for us because people didn't have any real experience with us and we weren't there for very long, we weren't able to establish ourselves with the customers and have any returning customers. So people didn't really have any real reason to trust them and to trust us rather. And we didn't have any reason to expect them to trust us either. And on to the market strategy. Our target market was primarily the students at Cal Poly Pomona. We believe they're the best target because we, we had convenient access to them and they had the proper income to buy our product. And the primary method to reach our, our customers was with word of mouth. Like we'll reach out to them, say, hey, hi, hello, how are you doing? Would you like to buy our cookies? And uh, to also extend our range of sale, we use social media like Facebook and Twitter and also Instagram. And the product we sold was Halloween sugar cookies, uh, three to a bag. And uh, the place and time, we decided this together jointly as a group, as the California Condors, uh, to sell during U hour because we believe that was uh, that would be the most attractive during that time. And we also decided to sell it at the Quad because we believe there would be most foot traffic at that time as well. And then our price was established by the cost of how much it was to actually buy the bags and buy the cookies and the stickers and everything from there we decided on the cost would be thirty dollars would break even point we didn't quite make it but that's it and then next was our promotion so we were all our generation millennials were all about social media so we used social media we word of mouth and then we used twitter facebook instagram and we tried to reach out to those that weren't necessarily on our social media through just in our classes. So the final thing we're going to talk about is how well we actually did. Um, as Sarah briefly mentioned, we had a breaking point was thirty dollars. Um, talk about that in a bit, but we only sold nine bags of cookies at a dollar each, which means that we're only going to make about nine dollars. Um, so a break even of thirty dollars, obviously, we didn't exactly reach that. Um, so yeah, you know, the evaluation, we didn't reach our goal of selling 30 bags of cookies to make our break even, so we did have a loss. Um, and there's a whole bunch of different ways that we could have uh, 
change that, um, which is how we improve. Um, there's a lot of stuff that we could have done better. Some of the more basic stuff is uh, better location. Uh, we thought we had a pretty good location, but the way it turned out obviously wasn't that good. Um, the way the career fair was set up, we thought we would be able to intercept a lot of the foot traffic that was either going or leaving or participating in the, uh, the career fair, but the way it was set up, it directed the traffic away from us, as a matter of fact. And uh, we realized this after the fact. Had we noticed this uh, as we were selling, we might have tried to squeeze into the career fair and try to sneak a booth in there and steal some of their customers, but um, we didn't realize this until after the fact that the career fair, instead of helping us, actually hurt us. Uh, another thing we could have used is, as we said, we, we focused mainly on using dollar bills as our price of cash, which, um, looking back, if we had used, uh, had a, an able, a way to access um, cards, so credit cards, debit cards, using either Square, Venmo, or uh, any sort of the meal points or uh, swipes that are offered with Cal Poly, um, we would have been able to get more of the uh, more sales um, because college students don't generally carry cash on them. Uh, if we had used some more aggressive sales tactics, you know, whether we had some bigger signs, you know, actually pulled people over to us through whatever means, um, we would have just by getting foot traffic to go to our booth would have attracted more people, which then would have made more sales. And finally, time. Time is something that's a big concern for a lot of people. Whether it's you know how long you're going to live, how much you're going to make, how, how how long your business is going to be around. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, we didn't have enough time in terms of preparation, in terms of actual advertising, in terms of exposure, and in terms of actual sales. If we'd been there for a longer time, we would have gotten more sales because there would have been more time for people to interact with us. Um, and if we had more time with exposure, we would have built up more exposure, more people would have shown up because they would have been more interested. Uh, and also, if we'd actually been selling for a longer time, we would have built up a better reputation as a uh, company and we would have gotten some returning customers, which as we've talked about, um, the 80-20 policy, 20% 20 of your customers result in 80% of your sales. Uh, and with that being said, we were the California Condors.